Alright, it's part two of the fork refresh and this has been draining for a day almost 24 hours exactly there we got FG0161 2012 uh, and it's still dripping a little as my poor garage floor will attest but what we're going to do now is pull out the seals dust seal and oil seal which is actually really simple so we just separate the tubes simple as that keep that and now we need a really fine screwdriver this should do there's lots of videos online of this process, although I haven't seen any for this specific model of fork. So there we go. It's in pretty good shape, as it should be. And there is the seal, and there's the bushing, and there's the spring clip that's holding everything in place. Actually, I'll need a smaller one. better. Okay, now I've seen differing methods of removing this seal because of course you can't slam it with the tube. Some people have said heating up the outs this tube makes it that much easier. I'm going to try it both ways. I'm going to try heating it up and not heating it up. Oh, and by the way, I found some recommended settings, so I'm not terribly concerned about those numbers there. Hmm. So I'm going to do this one without heat, and I'm going to do the next one with heat and see what the difference is. I think the heat is really necessary. It might make it 10% easier, but I don't know. Okay, and you know what? That's interesting. This was round side up, and this fork is fresh from the factory. No worse than normal. Anyway, I've got to go pick up those other seals that arrived at the store just today. Oh. And put them in, and we will be good to go. I've finished cleaning up the tube, got the spacer out. 
I uh, got the new seal which I just put a little bit of WD-40 on to get ready for installation. I'm going to reuse the dust seal. I didn't have any replacements in stock. I would have had to wait a couple of weeks for new ones. So I've just cleaned out the double lips, the double lip area. Should be good to go. So what I'm going to do is reinstall the washer. This is nice and lubed up with magic juice. There it is. And trusty old 43 mil steel driver. This thing has paid for itself a hundred times over. And we'll use firm but gentle pressure. There we go. Simple as that. Then in goes the clip. There. Simple as that. Now I can put in the reused dust seal. Same thing again. Firm but gentle pressure. Okay. And let's see. So I'll get the fork leg. And yeah, so this is some fresh 10 weight fluid. The, uh, <clears throat> the original fork had 475 in it. So I'm going to pour in 500 and use my fork oil height setting tool to draw out the excess. So that is set at 150 millimeters of fork height. Thanks to Comfy Sofa who posted a link to some very hel helpful uh, front fork settings for these forks. So let's hope they help. Uh, the majority of the riding I do is on Circuit of the Americas, which is a very smooth track. But yeah, I was on Harris Hill last weekend, which is not a very smooth track. And I'm hoping to do some more Eagles Canyon Raceway, which is also a very goat-like track. Okay, so let's slide in the tube which has finished draining and we'll finish the reassembly so I'll be right back. Drained the fork leg pretty well. So now I'll slide it back into the main tube after I put this spring on. simple as that. Alright, now time for the new fluid. So I know there's too much in there now, by a little bit, but that's what I want. I want to be able to suck out the excess. Okay, now we can see that it's displacing the, oil, uh, the air in there. The oil is pushing the air out. There we go. Now it's sucking it into the cartridge. see just a little bit of discolored fluid came out then just a little bit so I didn't do I didn't drain everything absolutely perfectly but it's mostly red there we go now it's all red okay 
There we go. So there's no spring in there still. Oop, no spacer either. Fix that. Nice and clean. There we go. And I might just poke that down a little. There we go. Okay, time for the sucker. This is actually a brake bleeding tool. Which is brand spanking new. So it's never had brake fluid in it. Okay, so you can see it's now sucking fluid out. of an excess in there than I expected. Okay, there we go. Okay, that is 150 millimeters of air gap. So the air gap is set. I'll wipe it down first. Now, I don't have the right tool to hold this tube. If I can figure out. Okay, there we go. the compressor to push this down, tighten it up. Okay.
Okay. Now, I'm actually going to leave that sitting for a while. Let the... Well, you know what, I'll tell you what, I'll do a little test first. Now this cap was extremely not tight when I removed it. So it was barely tight. Took the tiniest little bit of force to remove it from when I was undoing it. Still clamped in the fork, uh, triple clamps. So let's do a little test. Hmm. It's kind of hard to tell any difference immediately. So that should be about it. Less than one uh, let's see, less than one Boom Crash Opera album. Okay. So I've got the other one draining. I will finish up with that one and then reinstall. So we should be good to go. Um, yeah, I won't bother filming that. The key issues have all, we, have all been covered. Removing the seal, removing the oil seal, replacing the oil seal, replacing the dust cover seal, setting the oil height. Well, and actually, you know what, I can do this. Okay, spring preload I'll do in the bike because that requires this to be turned, 8.5 turns in. Uh, rebound, set it all the way in and then count out 12. Okay, easy as that. And the compression all the way in, count out to 12 also. Okay, simple as that. And 8.5 on the preload. Okay. Thanks again, Comfy Sofa, for that link to the thread on suspension. That's it for now. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to see the forks being reinstalled. Um, oh, actually, that reminds me. Speaking of reinstalling the forks, I did just get this little item from Fast Franks via AF1. This little nylon plug inserts into the end of the axle, so when you're sliding it back into the fork tube, it just goes in that much easier. It's not a slider. It's a, it's a guide. So we shall see if it works very well. If so, great. If not, yeah, big deal. It's worth a try. I'm thinking what I might do is get some captive nuts for the t for the rear just for that one okay that's it for now hope this has been helpful any questions or suggestions or input please post them in the comments and I will get back to each and every one of them so thank you again bye for now <laughs>